Hello everyone and welcome to the inside of my coat. I hope you guys are comfy in there. You'll be in there the entire time. So, <laughs> sorry about that, but it is very cold outside and there is not a whole lot of heat inside. Because we are at the ReStore in Williamsburg. I have talked about multiple times on my channel that I know I am lucky that my local restores here in Newport News and Williamsburg, I am consistently able to find great stuff to resell. Uh, if you are a furniture flipper, this is also an amazing place to pick up items to flip. Uh, some items they do mark up, but you can still get some pretty great deals uh, to flip if you are a furniture flipper. I uh, am not because I was disabled and I, I tempted one and immediately realized that I ran out of steam and could not could not do it so unfortunately it's not something I can do it would be something I would love to be able to do but it is not something that I have the physicality for there's a lot of chairs uh, in the back there there is a, a little kid section where they have all like the board games and toys and stuff uh, they accept everything at this restore uh, except for maybe clothes uh, here's me they have a lot of workout equipment though and they don't really accept clothes unless it is a buyout. So the local Walmart will give them overstock to sell. So like towels and linens and clothing and stuff. Any of that is almost all brand new. They don't resell any of the like other stuff here. The only thing they really accept here is housewares and books and furniture and stuff to build a house with. But hopefully I won't make you guys too sick today it's just a quick walkthrough because sometimes people leave stuff on the furniture that they decide not to buy uh, from inside this other store they recently expanded so there are four giant rooms now I'm trying to show you over here that they do have a jewelry case and they do not do discounts on the jewelry uh, they do not mark down the jewelry all of the jewelry at this restore is appraised by a local jeweler uh, a high-end jeweler so the prices they put on this jewelry are retail prices <laughs> which is a thing that happens but this is right by uh, uh, in the middle of a bunch of gated communities and retirement communities so people with money donate stuff here which is why I used to really love coming here to find stuff for resale uh, but they have marked up their hard goods quite a bit <laughs> That lady just randomly had to shout out to me that she used to have this dishware when she was a child, so she was buying it. I, You know what, lady? I hope you love it. But, you know, Tupperware, I found Tupperware here. It used to be like a dollar a piece. Now they're marking it up to like 5 to $10 a piece. So this is an enameled pot, but it had no brand. But it was just really interesting looking. It was an interesting shape. It had interesting handles. I just, there was not a, a brand name at all on it. So I just left it behind. Uh, I, if you knew the brand, just based on the, the white pot you see there, please let me know. <laughs> That'd be great. But I'm trying to go slow so that way I don't give anybody motion sickness, including myself when I'm editing this footage because man, I, I edited some footage like when I first got this camera and I think all of us were a little bit uncomfy with that. <laughs> but here they do all the decorative plates like this, uh, the large platters like this. And here is the wall of mugs. I promise I look at mugs every time I go into any thrift store. I just, they've been marking them up recently. There is a Morton Salt mug up there that I actually did not see when I was at the store. And I am now sad that I missed it. Uh, that's a little Korean mug. It's just pretty. I just thought this was funny. It says, I get my kicks from aerobics. And this is from the 80s. Hallmark from the 80s. If I didn't have a couple of these mugs, these 80s mugs, novelty 80s mugs in my store that I've had for like a couple years because I thought they were cute, I would pick that up. This is a Starbucks mug. $5. Three years ago, I could have gotten that for 50 cents. But, you know. Got inflation even here at the thrift store. So I'm just double checking to make sure that there's nothing that I missed or they missed, despite that Morton Salt one. 
over there. So I see something over here, which you guys can't see because my jacket's in the way. This is a reproduction. Uh, that is, a, it, it was a 70s shape, so I thought it was a 70s mug, but it actually was a reproduction that literally said, Vintage Traditions. So that was a no. Uh, these are, they look yellow on the camera, but these are like this weird kind of like chartreuse color, which I guess is still technically yellow. I actually recently sold a set of those plates that were gifted to me by Melissa that were multiple colored, but I sold them for like 10 bucks and they wanted $4 for them. And because I couldn't directly attribute that to the brand that I had sold the other ones for, I just left them there. I always look at uh, pots that are interesting looking because I have bought and sold plenty of pots uh, in my time reselling. This is a cherry pie plate. I thought about getting it for thrifted treats because I'm due one, but it's $8. Eight to $10 is about what I could get for it on eBay. Uh, not including shipping, so that got left behind. This is an anchor hawking uh, piece. Nice little, it looked like vision wear at first. Uh, this one is the one and a half quart, I believe, uh, but because it was $10, it got left behind. So I could have doubled my money probably on it, but it would have sat for a while because um, they are going for roughly about $20, $25 on eBay, which is why I got left behind. These are cute. They are $8 a piece, so they're not that cute because that's about what I could get for them on eBay. They're a German spice set, kind of in like the Linux style, but I think they were, you know, before Linux. I think Linux copied them. Hopefully I'm doing a little bit better this time with the uh, motion sickness. I mean, I feel like I am, but you know, I'm not watching this on like a big screen. I'm watching it in a little viewfinder. <laughs> so let me know if I'm doing better this time. I know the jacket and my hair clip is uh, slightly annoying, but you know, at least that note, at least y'all know that you're close to my heart because that's where the camera is right now. You're like right on my sternum right now, just cuddling warm inside my down jacket. Here we got a bunch of figurines and uh, the Scarfield. It was a dollar. Uh, he had a chip on his face. He's, I don't know. Garfield just makes me happy. It makes me sad that Chris Pratt is uh, voicing him, but, you know, we can just try to ignore that. It is my personal opinion that we should just stop giving Chris Pratt voiceover work. There are voice actors for a reason. Chris Pratt just sounds like Chris Pratt in every movie, in every role. That is... A little cookie cutter it is aluminum and the reason I picked it up to look at it is because that is the exact same style of cookie cutter that my mom has that I made cookies with when I was a small child and it just made me happy I am now gonna take a long hard look at all of these salt and pepper shakers this one is like marble or alabaster I don't know uh, it's four dollars heck and heavy it did not have any name on it as me just like checking to see how it works. I've <laughs> it made noise, so I had to make it make more noise because I am a little child inside. So I could not read the maker in here. It did say made in USA. My guess is these are a pair of salt and pepper shakers from the 70s, uh, based on both the style and also the glaze color. Uh, but because I could not make out the maker. I decided to leave them. Uh, they zip tied these, which made trying to put them back almost impossible because they would not sit straight and they're ceramic. So I did not want them to fall down and break. You can see the struggle here. All right. Uh, hopefully it'll stay. I'm sure that will fall at some point. These are Pusheen. Pusheen. Pusheen is a little Japanese character, little cat. Uh, the Pusheen set, brand new, sells for $10, but I just couldn't not pick those up. That's C Catalina, also for 10 to $15. Uh, these didn't have any makers on them. Uh, they just looked interesting. So, yeah, I probably could have Google Lens them, but uh, I didn't really feel like doing that. <laughs> um, those are modern, so just me taking a step back just to double check that I didn't miss anything. Here's an entire wall of clear glass vases. 
Ooh, this looks neat. Oh, it's Shawnee pottery. That's, it's been a while since I found a piece of Shawnee. Um, it does have a little tiny flea bite on one front piece because it has like the parquet tile look to it. Um, so this is me getting distracted by the little tiny Asian vase there. And so I'm trying to make it so I can Google Lens this to see what it's worth. So that's me bringing up Google Lens, taking a picture real quick. Magic! So they want a little bit too much money for this for resale because it's reselling roughly around $25 and it's another one of those pieces where they've marked it at 10 so I'm going to have to leave that behind. I don't know enough about dug bottles, uh, dig bottles in order to, or antique vintage bottles to really pick them up. I tried and failed miserably at it, so I just don't deal with it now. Um, that was a pretty green little little bottle. I would have just used it as a bud vase, but they wanted like $5 for it. Here's another Pusheen piece. Little modern tin. Here it is, Pusheen. He's so cute. Hello, Pusheen. It's just adorable. Um, if you can get the Pusheen plushes, um, they can actually sell pretty decent money, especially if you can get them for like 50 cents to a dollar. Uh, that's a toothpick holder or a shot glass, however you want to use it. You know, I'm not your real dad. You can put whatever you want in it. <laughs> I don't really do shots, so toothpicks it would be for me. But again, this is me trying to go slow to make sure I don't get you guys sick. Here's a bunch of plates. Uh, these are, I don't, I don't know. Uh, they are like little flower vases. They're meant to be like a French impressionist style, but I think those are like 50s repros, which could be still valuable, but none of them had a maker's mark on them. This is TSS China. Uh, it's restaurant wear, but I decided to leave that behind mostly just because I am trying to empty out my cabinets. I have too much dishware right now, and I have too many hard goods right now that are unlisted that need to get listed. So until I, I pare that down, it's gotta be really magnificent for me to pick it up. So I'm going through, they have all the crystal normally in that center aisle. They have the sets here to the right. This lady was bound and determined to hit me with her shopping cart. She was just like, I'm coming by you. I do not care if like you're hugging the shelves. I am still going to definitely hit you with the shopping cart. So most of the sets here, you know, like Limoges, which are great. Uh, I, I, like I said, I just don't have room for them. This is a cute little tea set, but it's more modern. So I left that behind all the clear glass if you if you need some glassware like there is no reason for these college kids to be going to like target or walmart to buy like basic cups start your college kid off right just take them to a thrift store <laughs> there's so much clear glass everywhere you don't need to buy it brand new that's what that's what hands and soap is for i couldn't figure out if those are supposed to be bud vases or champagne flues uh if they were champagne flues, and I knew they were champagne flues, I would pick them up. Here is every stoneware stein you could possibly want. And all of them were marked up, so I left those behind. There's a little, like, folk art corner over there. Um, those are most of those are, like, 80s pieces, so I left those behind. I've actually never seen the little plates. These This goes to a 70s fondue set. They're asking $3 for it. But there is no rest of it and it's missing several pieces, so I just left it behind. It would need two more forks and three more little plates, and I, I probably would have picked it up then. But I don't really want to go through the knives because I will definitely cut myself. I thought this was uh, Danish. It is not. It is Japanese, which is still awesome. I have no idea what that would be. But if it was, you know, mid-century modern... I mean, it's probably still mid-century modern, but it's Japanese instead of, like, Flemish or Danish or Scandinavian. That's modern. Uh, if it was any of those makers, I would have picked it up, but the Japanese stuff doesn't sell for as much. A whole bunch of mirrors. I thought this was hilarious. I'm sure all of you other moms will also probably find that very funny. You can pause it at 
just rewind a little bit and pause it so you can read it because apparently I didn't. I read really fast and I forget that other people cannot do that. So my apologies. I, these are glass pumpkins. They are not blown glass pumpkins. I think those are made in a factory somewhere. So I left that behind. This is cute, but they wanted $15 for each piece, not $15 for the set. So that stayed behind. I think that's, that's the prices that was there. And this is normally the front half is where they put all of the overstock. I talked to you like they do do, you know, overstock of stores will donate their stuff here to the restore. And to the right is all of the artwork. I have found, you know, photographs, framed photographs that I've sold for $50. I have found other art that I have sold, you know, for 10 to $40. Um, the artwork is definitely a place that is overlooked quite frequently because people don't feel confident or comfortable shipping framed pieces. They think it's going to be too bulky and too expensive. Again, you do what you want for your business. Uh, I'm perfectly happy to have maximalist walls and I just hang it up on my wall until it sells. I'm very much happy to be a maximalist until they find their new home. Now this artist had a couple of really nice pieces, but unfortunately none, no history of sales on eBay. So I just left them behind. That's something like if you had an antique booth, definitely. Uh, this is a sampler, a nice framed sampler. I think this is a more modern piece. Um, so these were selling when I looked them up about, you know, 15 to $20 because it's a more modern framed piece. So I did leave that behind. I thought this was very cute. This obviously has some age to it. Um, the frame and the backing is trash, but I probably should have picked that up. I could have cleaned it and then, you know, sold it as is even for $2, but I have enough projects already that I need to turn into profits. So I've left that behind. This is me giving this another long, hard look. Really like thinking about it. Also, it just felt nice. This has like some kind of velvet matting. It's a really nice framed and matte job. It's a really nice piece, but I don't think it is vintage enough, old enough to warrant picking up. So I left that behind. Here's another needlepoint piece. This is, you know, military of some time type. Uh, but just backing up to get a good look. And then I saw these burbs. I love burbs. And by I love burbs, I mean I love selling burbs. So what I'm going to do now is because I could not find the uh, gallery on the back that sold these, I'm going to just Google Lens, the artist, and the prints are selling between $20 to $35 with just the print. So I'm definitely going to pick both of these up for $4 a piece. That is an easy win for me. It's me double checking that I've not left anything behind there. Uh, I just, this is me struggling, just the struggle. The struggle is so real trying to do this with one hand. Why am I showing this to you? Why am I showing this man to you? So Mark Martin, it just made me laugh because Mark Martin was my dad's favorite race car driver. He has since, long since been retired. Uh, and as such, my dad has long since stopped watching racing. But that just made me laugh and think of my dad. So... Like, my dad had Mark Martin t-shirts, Mark Martin hats. Watch the race every Sunday. Is it Sunday? Yeah, I think instead of watching football, my dad watched racing. Maybe they were Saturday races. I have no idea. I just know for at least four to six hours, one day a weekend, the only thing that was on TV in the house was people going left. <laughs> Can you tell? I was not necessarily a big fan of it. Uh, here's here are the books. My favorite thing in the store is the books. I love checking the store out for books. They get regular book donations. This is me just checking to make sure you guys are still on. Yay, you're still recording. Fabulous. So I am just scanning. Uh, if you don't know books, that's okay. Uh, I can tell that you guys can just like skip ahead to the haul section because I will be looking at books for the rest of the shopping section. So if you're not interested in books, you can just fast forward a bit. 
This is Philip Roth. The only reason I know who Philip Roth is is because of that big book buyout I did recently where I got a whole bunch of new books for 10 cents a piece. And this was someone who was in that lot a lot. Wow, that was a lot of lots. But this is Portnoy's Complaint, which is one of his more famous works. And so this was me looking it up. It is not a first print uh, because it's from 1969 and the first print I believe was in 1967. This is a this is a Great Britain edition which is where it was originally published. So this is me taking a look at it to see you know what are comps because it's going to be like what 50 cents here. So you're seeing a lot of yellow here because those are the actual first editions is yellow not black. I see one black one for $20 and there are 65 total listed and there are, what is it? They're about like 11 solds, nine solds. And they're all the yellow editions because they're the actual first edition. So, so since there's no sales history for this cover, I decided to pass on it. I have plenty of books that have no sale history that are brand new that need to sell before I pick up any more. I probably have like thousands of books in my house right now <laughs> as it is. But, you know, books are my favorite thing to pick up and resell just in general. So this is me taking a look. I normally stand back so I can get a good view of everything. Here is my first pickup. That is Moss Flower by Brian Jakes, who makes has a whole series called the Red Wall series, which has a whole bunch of anthropomorphic animals. But instead of being furries where they're like people size with people characteristics, they're animals with animal characteristics. They just happen to wear clothes and swords and do magic <laughs> it's a series i really love so i picked that up um i will offer that on whatnot first and then if it doesn't sell on whatnot it'll just go into the brian jake slot i already have for sale on ebay so if you're interested it's there uh normally what i have to do is i have to just stand there and stare at the books and this lets me just do like a glance because I'm looking for specific authors. I'm looking for specific publishers. I'm looking for specific genres. I'm also like looking at the age of the books. This is like 1990s, like police stuff. Uh, this is older as well. And I was trying to figure, I've never seen that before. So I was like, what is a book, book scene or bookscape? What was called bookscapes. And so this is a set. It is missing like half the books in the set, but it is a whole bunch of classics that are published into these anthologies. And then I thought this is weird enough to try to look it up. So this is a, where are they now? 25 anniversary for men that graduated from Harvard in 1934. And that's me asking why it exists, because I have literally no idea why this exists. Uh, I'm guessing because, you know, Harvard is the fancy school. And so people that went to Harvard in 1934 were the, the to-do of society, the silver spoons, if you will. And I could not find this exact year at all, which is surprising, considering that these individuals probably had to go to war for World War II. Um, but I could not find this exact year and it is pretty interesting. It, uh, I'm pretty sure like my partner probably would have just liked to have looked at it, but I didn't get it for him. It, it's kind of interesting because it had the picture, their class picture from 1934. And then it had like a brief interview with them. Like what it, what did they get out of Harvard? What have they been doing since they got out of Harvard? Like, how has going to Harvard benefited them? And then, like, it had a picture of them 25 years later. And you can see, like, how they aged. So, it was just, it was, it was an interesting book. You know, if you can find the first edition of this. So, the first time they did these uh, archive lookbacks, uh, they can be a little bit more valuable. Like, I saw, like, the first one that they did of these selling for, like, 75 to $100 dollars. Because people that go to Harvard like Harvard history. But uh, that particular one, like I said, I could not find. And then ones roughly around the same time period were going for like 20 bucks. So I was like, yeah, it's neat. But I, d I don't know. It also had a lot of foxing. Uh, foxing is not mold. 
uh, be careful though, because books do mold. So you have to be able to tell the difference between foxing and mold. Foxing is an oxidation of the iron pigments used in the ink and also um, the acid of the paper making process breaking down the ink. So that is what the foxing is. And that can be accelerated by improper storage in heat and humidity. And again, that is more information than most of you really want to have about books. But these are uh, Charlene Harris. This is the Southern Vampire series, also known as Sookie Stackhouse, and more popularly known as the books that the True Blood series is very, very loosely based off of. Can you can you tell my disdain there? So you can see there's a hardcover up there. I did not pick that one up because it is not new, but those Ace paperbacks are new. So I did pick those up because I already have some of those listed already in my eBay store. That's the only times I picked those up. So this is Essie Hinton, the lovely lady author of The Outsiders, also a movie. And I saw this hardcover and this is, she has not written a whole lot. Um, she's been very well received for the books that she has written and I've never seen this title before. So I'm actually picking that up for myself. Uh, that will not be up for resale until after I have had an opportunity to read it. Here's the shelf I've already looked at. That's where I got the Brian Jakes book. And uh, I missed this the first time. I always look at books twice because sometimes I miss things. Um, but this is an omnibus of three of Stephen King's most famous novels. Uh, so that is definitely going with me as well. I'm making quite the stack here. And I haven't even gotten to my favorite section yet. Uh, I literally look at all the books because they do not do a good job sorting things in appropriate categories. But... I'm now, however, going to go with you over to Hall Bob to end the video. Hello and welcome to the Hall, y'all. This will probably be, well, hopefully it will probably be the only short haul of Thriftmas. And that is because almost everything I picked up uh, from the restore in Williamsburg was books. You didn't actually get to see all of the books that I picked up in the shopping portion. But if you would like to see all of the books that I picked up besides the two I'm going to show you in this haul, you will have to follow my book channel, which will be linked up above and of course in the description down below. Uh, that haul will not be posted by the time this video goes out, but it should be next week sometimes. And that is because all of the books that I picked up, besides the two I'm showing you, are going to be for sale on Whatnot. So if you're interested to see what books I picked up, they're all fantasy, horror, and uh, science fiction. Uh, if not, again, you do you, but that is where those books will be. The only books I can show you, well, I could show you the other ones, but I'm not going to. The only books I'm going to show you are Definitely Dead by Charlene Harris and From Dead to Worse. Both of these are from the Sookie Stackhouse Southern Vampire series, also known as True Blood because that's what they called the TV series. Uh, the only reason I picked these up is because they're brand new. I also already have like this one listed in brand new connections, so I can just do a on there and then this is one i i actually own all of these books in hardcover i was working for barnes and noble when the series came out well a little bit after the series came out uh, but i ended up liking it so much i actually own, i collected the whole series i collected it before true blood came out i actually not really watched the show because i realized that it didn't follow the books exactly and so i noped out of that but it is a decent series, but because of the fact it had a TV show on for so long, it was so prolific that these books aren't really worth a whole lot unless you can get them new or you can get like the complete set. So that's just a reseller thing. So that's the only reason why I picked these up and why they're going directly on eBay instead of whatnot is because of the fact that these are so plentiful that it's not really, not really worth it otherwise. I mean, technically what is worth it to one reseller versus the other is completely subjective so as i always say you do you the other thing you guys saw me pick up are these two prints i picked paid four dollars a piece for these and the reason why these are more valuable than the four dollars paid for them is the print inside not necessarily the fact that they are framed in england because these are you know not really cute frames they're from the 80s uh well not the print the frame is from the 80s uh the framing is actually done in i think Bolton, England by the Bromley Art Company or the Bromley Art Framery. I don't, gallery, who knows? It just says the Bromley Art here on the back. 
but I picked these up because the print is worth more than the four dollars so someone can always buy these and then have them reframe to fit their aesthetic or they could just you know buy it because they like it as it is who knows but that is why I picked these up that is normally what I pick up at this restore is books and art because as you guys saw in the shopping video they have a tendency to mark up things <laughs> Uh, it didn't used to be that way. It used to be that I used to get all the mugs for like 50 cents each and then if I bought enough of them they'd give me like a deal of 25 cents each. I have however also found the Starbucks mugs there, um, like the actual valuable ones, the 40 to 60 dollar ones there uh, as well, but it's been a while since I've picked up hard goods there due to the fact that they have decided to mark them all up too close if not more than eBay prices sometimes. Uh, segue into Starbucks. Because this is going to be such a small haul, I'm actually going to show you this. This is a Starbucks tumbler. It's their 24 ounce tumbler. And I'm showing you this because I went to pick up a return. I've had more returns in the last three weeks than I've had in the last three years, which sucks. But across the way, there is a hair seeder that has a Starbucks inside. And this place seems to be the only place that consistently keeps these in stock. It's right across the street from a gated retirement slash golf club community. So like the people that are really well millennials and younger that really love these things aren't uh don't shop there very often so that means that if one of these has a new drop then i get it which is why i have the shiny green one <laughs> which is the 2023 uh holiday release but this one was 30 dollars uh, the, this one would have been $23 if it wasn't for the fact that apparently these are like the summer release and because they were summer release they marked them down so I paid $6 for this. I've been thinking about getting it because I have all the green ones. I, if, it, if it comes out in green, gray, silver, or black I am probably going to buy it. But I was thinking about this one because it's technically yellow and blue with a little bit of green ombre and then when I saw that I was like absolutely I'm gonna get that and then when I saw that there were two of them I was like girl slash reseller math indicates that that means mine is going to be free if I sell this one. So <laughs> that is what I decided to do. I got both of them. One of them I'm keeping and this one I'm going to resell. And then the only thing else that I picked up at the restore is this. If you did not know these vintage uh, aluminum lawn chairs. This is actually a beach chair. This is the low boy chair so it's short um, can sell really well. I actually sold a pair of these during, I think, the pandemic on Facebook Marketplace. They were green, uh, orange, and yellow for $80. Uh, the other pair I gave to my mom and dad, and then my brother immediately broke it with his 215-pound uh, self. He just sat in it too hard because my brother is a big, like, he's, he's, six, he's a little over six feet tall. He's 215 pounds. It's all muscle. For the ladies, this is what he looks like. He is single. My mom might laugh at that and please don't tell Andrew it's so I put this in the video he'll probably get mad at me. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah this is my brother. Um, but yeah I, I hopefully will be able to, I paid two dollars for this so I hopefully will be able to sell it in the you know 30 35 dollar range because there is only one of them and it's the low boy it's not the regular lawn chair. Uh, it also only has the plastic handles instead of the wood handles. The wood handles also go for a little bit more. But I paid, if you include the Starbucks thing that I did retail arbitrage, I paid $28 for everything. And definitely going to make some good profit on this little haul. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hopefully, hopefully you all have been enjoying Thurfmas. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye. Bye. Maxi. You're in my seat. I need to sit there. Hey. My butt's gonna boot you. You're so pretty.